In this video, we're going to further refine our corridor by assigning our targets and by setting the frequency of our assemblies inside of our corridor. In order to do that, we're going to navigate over to the Prospector tab, we're going to go down to our Dev Core, we're going to right click, and we're going to go to Properties. Inside of Properties, we're going to go into Parameters, and this is where we have our Baseline and Region sections. So inside of our Baseline and Region sections, if we go and we select Set All Targets, Inside of here, it has all of the targets associated with certain sections inside of our, our corridor. So we have the dev core and assembly names. I don't prefer to do it at all in one shot because I don't wanna accidentally set the wrong target. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna set my baselines one at a time. So I'm gonna to go to my baseline for my main corridor, not the cul-de-sac. I'm gonna go over to my targets and I'm gonna click the ellipses associated with my dev core dev target. I'm going to set my target surfaces as EG. I'm going to set my width or offset targets as my offset alignments. And so as you can see, my transition alignment is set to right. So what I need to make sure I'm doing is selecting my dev align right and clicking add and then clicking OK. And then same thing here for my left I need to make sure I'm choosing my dev align left and clicking add and clicking OK. Moving on to slope and elevation targets, we have our basic lane transitions for right. So I'm going to go ahead and set my right to my dev align right and click OK. And then I'm going to select my left, drop down, dev align left, add and click OK. So I've now set all of my targets for my dev core, dev target region. Now I'm gonna move on to my baseline for my cul-de-sac and I'm gonna set my targets. And so my surface targets are going to be EG. My width and offset targets are gonna be, this is gonna be interesting because we are going to be targeting the dev alignment because the dev alignment is in the center of that corridor or in the center of that cul-de-sac. So I'm gonna select dev align, I'm gonna select add, and I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then for my slope or elevation targets, I'm gonna go ahead and select my dev align profile, and I'm gonna select my dev align profile, and click add, and then I'm gonna click okay. And so then I'm gonna finally click okay to accept all of those targets. Now I'm gonna move into frequencies. So inside of my frequencies for my main baseline, I'm gonna select the ellipses here, and I'm gonna leave my tangent sections the same. I don't have spirals, so I don't need to modify that. And then my vertical baseline, I could modify that, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that the same. The only one that I'm interested in changing is my curve increments. I'm gonna change my curve increments to five because we have some relatively tight curves and I wanna capture those curves as well-defined as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it as five and click okay. And then I'm gonna go to my cul-de-sac and I'm gonna set my curve increment to five as well, and I'm gonna click OK. And when I'm done with that, you're gonna see that both of my uh, regions are out of date, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit Apply. Civil 3D is gonna ask me to rebuild the corridor. I'm gonna rebuild it, and I'm going to click OK. And when we click OK, what you'll notice is that our corridor is now created with a very well-defined cul-de-sac end, and every corner that we go to is now using the targets for the offset widths that we defined and our slopes are targeting our surface. So if I go and I click on this corridor now and I go to the object viewer, when you look at the object viewer, you are going to notice that this corridor is much more refined than the last one that we looked at. You're gonna see that we have sidewalks that have well-defined curves coming around the corners. The transitions are well encapsulated. You can see some grading going to the daylight of the existing surface. And then when we move into the cul-de-sac, instead of having that jagged angular cul-de-sac, because we changed to five foot increments, we now have this well-defined circular cul-de-sac that is correctly targeting the center line profile of our dev alignment going along the curb line as we hoped it would.